can you imagine anything smarter than turning on your iron <laughs> on a really really hot September day to make some experiments? <laughs> I'm just asking myself if I'm normal because this is so hot and in my room it's just so hot that I think I'm going a little bit crazy, but I want to do some experiments today and I thought I turn on the camera because if that works, what I have in my head, then it might be interesting for you as well. <laughs> Hi, this is Luisa Heinzel. Nice to see you here today with some papers. This is just some matte photo paper. This is uh, this kind of photo paper that has the photo surface on both sides so that I don't have to think about which is the right size uh, side to use. You could use normal copy paper or any other paper, but the advantage of this matte photo paper is that you get really, really interesting colors um, with using either, ooh, I'm sorry, either spray stains or oxide sprays. The photo paper reacts to these mediums in a really, really gorgeous way, but you can try this out with normal paper as well. I also have some stays on jet black ink here. We will need that later. Some water. Please don't be confused. This was an empty spray stain bottle. I've just filled it with water because I've uh, destroyed my other you know, sprayer. I had a little accident and now it's broken, so I have to use this until I get a new one of the uh, this other spray thing, you know. And I also have these little plants that I have just gathered outside. I don't know what this is, but this is just, you know, <laughs> some tiny plants. I wanted to have something that has really like small um, leaves not so solid, but of course you could try other plants as well. Just use what you can find. Mm, I think you could do this with, for example, die cuts as well, if you don't have real plants. Mm, if you want to use a fake plant, then make sure that it's not made out of plastic or any other material that could melt when it gets in contact with heat because we are going to use our iron in a second. So another thing that I also have, but that is also optional, it's just um, for protection. I have this towel and I'm just going to put that here to my table because I'm going to use a lot of water and ink in a second and to make sure that I don't spritz the stuff to myself I have this because then um, this can soak the medium a little bit so that I don't get myself dirty so I want to make something like a fake eco dyeing I want to get a, an impression of my little plant to my paper in a fancy way <laughs> so we are going to spritz this whole paper with water and I'm really hoping that this will work. I've just made some experiments for the German video already. I'm going to wet this from the back as well so that it doesn't curl so much, just like this. And then I'm trying to get this really flat so that I'm able to lay my plant flat to this surface as well. And I'm using really, really, really much water. So you want to have like a little puddle on the paper. Then I'm going to use some spray stains and I want to go with this color combination of Lost Shadow, Freight Burlap. Oh, this is relatively empty already, but that doesn't matter. We get some out of there and some vintage photo. And the vintage photo is, um, I have chosen that because I want to get something like a little autumn vibe to this project. Then I'm taking my plant and now you can experiment um, what works better. If you put it this way so that the back is 
facing you or this way so that the front is facing you you know with these little mm, veins i think that's the word of the plants it uh, can give you different results perhaps you know that from jelly printing or eco dyeing or so um, you get really different results from both sides of the leaf so when i have this here i make sure that it is like pressed down as good as possible so that the leaves are not like curled or something and then i take a second piece of paper and i have my iron here in my other hand so that i can lay this down and then immediately press the iron to the paper um, this is the hottest setting that i can get with my iron please try that out i think it's a little bit different depending on what sh what iron you have mm, make sure that you don't burn your surface here you don't want to burn your <laughs> towel but i think that's not possible with a normal a normal iron because it's made to <laughs> iron towels or something like that but you can try different heat settings of course and when you press this down make sure that you are far enough away with your fingers and your body from those areas where the hot water can spritz out yeah because the, the iron is of course heating up the medium and the water now and you don't want to burn yourself with spritzing yourself with this hot stuff and that's also why i put the towel underneath so that when it spritzes it can just soak into the towel instead of spritzing to my body then i'm trying to get this as mm, dry as possible like this and then we will see what we get here oh, this is exciting <laughs> ah, oh. <laughs> this is yeah this is what we get i was hoping for this i mean i have um, seen a similar result in my german video already and i was hoping that we get this a second time so this seems to work relatively well you can see we have this impression now on the paper which was white when we have put it here yeah so remember this was the paper where we've spritzed the ink but we got the i guess better impression on the paper that we've placed on top so meaning when i take this off yeah it's like i uh thought look we have something here that is really like nearly invisible this is still a great background piece i would say but it's not so concrete like this and um <laughs> i really like these white areas so i thought what can we do to get like more of this color variation here i really like this but how to get more of this mm, so another possibility what you could do is take this and spritz it with water first like we've done it with the other paper before oh this nozzle this is now it comes out so just make it really really wet if it curls make it wet from the other side as well so that it gets flat again make sure that you have this like puddle and then I'm going to take the same plant because it's uh, easy. It's now relatively flat. And I'm putting that to the paper before putting the ink. Hoping that the leaves here will leave a white spot underneath. So let's perhaps try some other colors. I have some forest moss spray stain here. And this time I also will try to use not so much ink like before because i had the feeling that um, here these areas are relatively intensive so perhaps we can get a better result with not so much spray so this is a lost shadow again Ooh, again just for a little bit like variation and i'm going to take this and my iron in the other hand so that i can immediately press this down And I also think, but I can't explain that like in a chemical or 
such a way. Uh, I have the feeling when you leave the iron in one spot after um, pressing it down, the result gets better. So I try to press it down and wait until I can't hear any of those bubbly noises anymore. And then I go to the left and the right and dry the rest of the paper, which wasn't covered from the iron before. I have the feeling that that works better, but I have no idea if that is a general rule or just something that I have like in my mind as an idea and, you know, <laughs> But that's the thing with experimenting. <laughs> so let's take this off. Ooh, okay. That looks really cool. Even, I mean, why is this so black here now? I mean, it's, it's not really black, it's brown. But why? That's because the ink was on... Hmm, the ink was on these little... Um, leaves here and obviously then we get the impression here and like a lighter and more subtle color outside of this but what's going on here uh -huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. that is interesting I don't really like these swirly thingies of the ink that bothers me a little bit but for a background I think this is great and I also like the colors of this this is mm, a little bit like autumn the vintage photo gives like more autumn feeling but somehow I like this another thing that we could try is to make this wet first Perhaps this time I try to use not too much water, just a little bit so that we don't have like this puddle here. Um, and then let's try mm, forest moss in combination with vintage photos so that we get some of this really like orangey autumn color. Some, not everything, Louisa. <laughs> so then let's place this here. And I'm going with the method that we had in the very beginning. So just placing this here. And then I'm going to take another paper. And this time I want to make this a little bit wet as well to see if that gives a difference. So let's place this here. Take our iron and dry it. And um, by the way, um, when this is done, it's waterproof because this is photo paper. Um, for all of you who are new to my channel, um, I have made some experiments. I mean, uh, those of you who follow me for a longer time might have seen that already. But I want to mention that for the new people that are here, um, I found that out that you can use a water soluble medium like distress spray stain or also distress oxide spray oxide refiller all of the distress um, ink mediums would work for that and oxide ink mediums uh, you can put that to this kind of matte photo paper and then you get a waterproof result in the end i will link all of the videos with different uh, experiments that i've already done down below this video so that you can check that out <clears throat> and the colors on the photo paper turn out way different than if you would spray the medium to a normal paper. For example, forest moss gives this really, really extreme yellow. We know that forest moss has this yellow in it or that vintage photo has something like a reddish orangey color in it. But on the photo paper, it comes out really extremely. 
you have to have that in mind if you think, uh, yeah, I mean, you don't have to adjust your TV. <laughs> this is a normal result with photo paper. But if you haven't seen it before, you might be confused because this is such a really like extreme reaction which the ink gives you on this paper. So let's see what we have here. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. And you can see how different this gets depending on in which order you put the mediums. Water, ink, heat, you get this really dark thing and it is um, not giving you those really extreme colors compared to this where we've done it like the other way around and like this and mm, the ink got indirectly to the paper somehow yeah because we've not not spritzed it directly to this then you get two totally different results or oh. <laughs> well i think here we have a nice card background for a really grungy um autumn card <laughs> here we got nothing but I'm assuming that the back side of this paper, I haven't turned it yet, looks um, similar to this. Yeah, see, um, uh, look, this is, um, you know, if you compare this, you can see what I was trying to say before. The paper is somehow like a filter, like a coffee filter or something like that, yeah, where the ink comes through and then on the back side or with those indirect methods you get this really extreme color variation and by spritzing it directly um, you get this like more the original color but in a really intensive way I don't know if that makes sense um, so another thing that I want to try is I want to try to go a step further with this looking for something like this or something like this but in combination with stamps so let's spritz this first and then uh, here i'm going to make a puddle as well again because i think that that is the better way if you have more water then i'm going to take i think i want to have more than one here this time just like this and perhaps like this I'm trying to press this down so that it sticks to the paper a little bit with the water just like so perhaps we are going to make this I mean the plants themselves also a little bit wet so that we get perhaps a better impression of that and then let's perhaps go with some other colors i have a little rest of savage patina here in my bottle so let's try that i mean that will get not so autumny nish autumn -ish. what is the word <laughs> but let's see perhaps we can reach that by adding a tiny bit of vintage photo And then I want to try to take a stamp. Uh, this one, this is from the set Entomology, CMS uh, 328 by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. Has this really cool script. I want to try to just press the stamp in here, just to see what happens if we can get something from here don't know and now I will get <laughs> ink to my stamp yeah and I don't know what will happen below here but I want to have a second paper here on the side so that I can lift this up immediately see that this didn't work so well we got not so much here but that doesn't matter I take what I have here and press this down to my paper here 
just like so. Ooh. Oh, that is nice. Look, that is really nice. It's relatively abstract, of course, because we had so much water. But the good thing is, this should stay here now. And if this gets not too dark to this, then it should give us something because this is waterproof now. So I can take, if I can find it, my water and spritz this and there will come only a tiny little bit of the ink off which was too much but the rest as you can see it's waterproof and remember a distress ink yeah that is a water soluble medium so uh we have this and i'm realizing that this is relatively dry already i mean not dry that is completely silly louise not dry but soaked into the paper what shall we do? Shall we try to get something from here or spritz more? Let's try to get something from here. Perhaps it's good when we have not so much there because then it's uh, perhaps um, possible to see the stamp impression in the background. <laughs> okay, so let's, ooh, ooh, ooh. let's first look at this. This turned out very interesting and these light spots, I really like how that came out. That is really, really cool. So let's take a look at this one. Yeah. Okay, so we got the background, definitely. You can see this stamp in the background really, really well. And we got like a really subtle impression of the leaves not so bad but i think we can make this even better by going a step further if i have something like this then i'm immediately thinking how can i turn this what i already like into for example a card background or a journaling page background or something like that and then it my brain starts to like think what do i have um what could make this more interesting and i'm just thinking <clears throat> if i would take this stamp again and yeah shall we clean it or no, we don't clean it. This is relatively, you know, it's wet, but not not like it doesn't drop. But uh, we still have a little bit of ink here. So I will try. I mean, I can't put it in the same spot like it was here, but that doesn't matter. I will, I will not use this, but I will try it different. I will put it here like so. And I'm doing a little like finger dance here, like so, so that I don't get um, pressure to the whole thing. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Look, that gives way more contrast. That brings me to the wish to take vintage photo again. Mix that with a little bit of frayed burlap. Just spread that with my finger a little bit. Let's try to get a little bit of ink there and then stamp. Yeah, this here. Can you see that? This is now darker. I will um, not necessarily darker but more intensive i will show you that in a second in detail a little bit closer but let me just stamp here and there because i want to have a little bit more interest on those like white areas around here and of course this doesn't give you a um clear impression yeah it's just like you know <laughs> interest a little bit of grunge and I really like this diod diagonal diagonal <laughs> white spots here. <laughs> Those words. Look, that is really cool. And we can still see this leaf in the background, 
but what I want to try now is the following thing. Let me first quickly dry this and I will do that with my iron again because then the paper stays flat. So <clears throat> what I want... <laughs> A little bit of smoke here. Um, what I want to try now is I want to stamp over this and then I want to emboss that. Yeah. And I thought we could try to take this stamp here. This is called Shattered CMS 466 by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. I really like this stamp because it's so big and this pattern is just so gorgeous and this is a really versatile stamp in my eyes um, but we need such a thing so um, such a plate by the way comes with the stamp when you buy it that is really good because then you have something where you can like press it down of course you could use a stamping platform as well for this so let's take some embossing ink i'm going to take this embossing dabber and i want to get that here and here to follow this diagonal thing that we had there so let's try to ink up this And when I have that here, then the other corner is here. So let's do it. Yeah, perhaps we can do it a little bit randomly. I, I don't have such a good imagination of where this will go now, but <laughs> let's see. So let's just press this down and see what we get. I can see nothing, but that doesn't matter. Let's just take the paper and the golden embossing powder. By the way, this is by Ranger and this is the normal embossing powder. Um, if I would uh, do this again, I would definitely use some of this like fine detailed embossing powder. I mean, this works as well. Uh, perhaps but um, if you have this like fine embossing powder I think you can get a way better impression especially because this has so fine and thin lines this stamp and I think yeah with fine embossing powder that could work better but let's see. I think this is a fail, but we will see. I think I uh, had not en enough pressure on my stamp because I have the feeling that there's not so much powder sticking here, but we will see. Let's see this up. Oh. It's becoming the perfect background. I can already see it. <laughs> that is always so strange. It's just perfect. I don't know if you can see that in the camera so well. I'm trying to hold it so that the light can hit the surface. This is just perfect. I mean, it's um, obviously not a perfect stamp impression but for a background it's just perfect but um, if this was a card and uh, I always like to think about what will this become in the end yeah even if this is an experiment I can already think about what I want to do with it and if I look at this now like if I imagine this is the bottom and this is the top, then it's a little bit too massive for me here because the embossing came out way better here than here. And if I turn this around, yeah, I think that this makes more sense. Okay, so let's try something. I have chosen this stamp set. This is called Sketchy Leaves. 
CMS 467 by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. And it has this really gorgeous, really detailed leaves. So perhaps. Oh my goodness. Let's take this stamp first because we had. Uh, I mean, you know, is that obvious why I'm taking this? I'm hoping so because look. We have these little tiny things here, and this is relatively similar. So I thought that could make sense. I want to stamp this upside down here, uh, but in a really loose and backgroundish style. So I have a rest of ink here. I'm going to try to take this. And that seems to be just enough. And it's not so liquid. So that I'm hoping. Well, let's see. <laughs> be brave. <laughs> just do it. Uh, that was not so successful. Look, that, that was not enough. I, I mean, it was not enough ink. But that doesn't matter. Let's just... Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's just take some more of the... It's empty. Some more of the vintage photo. I mean, you could use... I mean, why am I using spray? That is relatively uncontrollable, isn't it? I want to try that. I, wa I want to know what happens if I do it like this. Be brave, Louisa. Be brave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it looks like this. It looks better than before. I hope that we can get something here now. Oh, we could also... This is waterproof. We could also make it wet again. And then stamp. Yeah, and then we get what I was looking for. Look, now this is really, really, really abstract and it's in the background. Hoping that we get something similar like here. Yeah, not so. I want to get a more clear impression to the foreground somehow. And for that, we are going to need a relatively dark ink, which is darker than Vintage Photo. I mean, I could wait until this is completely dry and then use, for example, um, archival ink or Stazon ink or something like that. But I want to try to stay with those water soluble mediums that got get waterproof on this because I also think that that gives like a really interesting result but what can we use what I have I mean we could use like for example ground espresso distressing but I don't have that I only have vintage photo distress ink and everything like ink that I have is not dark enough or it's like a totally different color i have uncharted mariner <laughs> but it's weird because <laughs> this is not autumn totally not let's try it we will never know if this could look great if we won't try it. This is damp, but that doesn't matter because um, the impression should get nice anyway because of this magic of the photo paper. And I'm hoping that the actual color of Uncharted Mariner will not come through so 
extremely because of all of the colors that we already have in the background. I'm hoping that it gets brownish somehow, but dark. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, we, we can see it now, but what the heck is that? That looks like... Okay. I mean, that could be a challenge to bring it into a nice color scheme. <laughs> that looks really weird. I mean, I'm assuming that it gets way more uh, when it's dry because, uh, yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, since this is already here and, you know, <laughs> it already looks weird. Perhaps if we add more of this weird stuff, perhaps it can get better and it looks like we had done it with knowledge and on purpose. So let's try to take this stamp again. But this time I'm going to take it with my fingers, just like with the background stamp that we uh, that I've used before. And just try to get like pieces of this to the background, but in the same color. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what do you think? Now this looks not so crazy anymore because we have more of this like crazy blue, green. I will carefully dry this with my heat gun. <laughs> That's totally weird. And that is a proof for this phenomenon of distress products. This is completely dry now and the color of Uncharted Mariner has somehow changed from something that I didn't like to something that I do like really much now. I don't know what this is, but I guess it's also because of the contrast with this orange here because this is like complementary colors now yeah <laughs> so what what have we learned today um so the first thing is photo paper is a really great paper and while i'm trying to make a little summary of what we've done today. I will also show you the results that I got from the German video. Perhaps that is interesting as well because that's a little bit different than what we got here. Um, so photo paper is a really really great paper. So that's the first thing that we <laughs> can learn with this because we can get so many different results. That is not a good example. Um, which we can use for like a really backgroundish background like this for example <clears throat> but we can also get more concrete results like this and for like autumn themed journals I think this is really really great and I'm happy that I got something like this but also something like this because I have a new digital paper that is just you know in the work and this will just match with that perfectly with oxide ink sprays you get a more creamy foggy result as you can see here and what i also wanted to show you here's a result that i got with white embossing powder this is more busy and whimsical and this is like more clean I like them both somehow, but they are yeah totally different. I wanted to get this white that I got from the leaf in more to the top here. And I thought with white embossing powder that could work great. And I really like that, it's especially with these white spots. This is not from these white dots that you can see here. It's not from the embossing powder, but it's from the impression that I got from the leaf before. And I like that looks a little bit like confetti okay so uh that's it 
and I wish you a very great time trying this this out or doing some other experiments. Perhaps you got some new ideas by seeing this. If yes, let me know. <laughs> Have a very great and creative day and see you the next time. Bye bye.